will um, be the judge. <coughs> wow. Marcos, thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, the short comment after Marcos' talk is adjuvant radiotherapy is dead. After my talk, you will be able to say long live adjuvant radiotherapy. After my reply, you will be able to advise adju radi adjuvant radiotherapy to these patients who really need it. Also, early salvage radiotherapy to these who need it, and you will be able to avoid it from these who don't need it. The first point is, adjuvant radiotherapy is an overtreatment. I always hear this. 50% of the patients will be irradiated. They will have second cancers. They will die on it. Okay. Is this, real? is this real an overtreatment? This is a question. And when you look into the data, you reviewed my paper, this was is now coming, comes not into the, came not into this paper. This is the ARO trial, and why I will start with the end. These are patients from the control group who were never irradiated or later on for early recurrence. And these are the patients who had positive margins, PT3 positive margins. And when you look after 10 years, 27% out of the control arm with positive margins were disease-free. Not 50%, 27. And the curve goes down further on. The second point is the same control group, positive margins, now Gleason score. Gleason score from 7 to 10. When you look for these patients, 18% after 10 years are without disease recurrence. And the curve goes down. There is no overtreatment in these high-risk patients. That's the most important point. Not every PT3 tumor has this problem, but a lot of these, these in 8 to 10, even more. <coughs> what is with salvage RT? This is uh, the famous Stevenson paper with 1,540 patients, and um, they had not early salvage, about, I think, five to 600 had early salvage, but when you look after two years, you see 40% of the patients recurred. This is an overtreatment for salvage therapy. And in selected cases, you have an overtreatment in patients who have radical prostatectomy. This is also well known. So the point is is this clearly an overtreatment? When you're looking for rectal cancer, there is a famous German trial published in the New England Journal giving neoadjuvant combined radiotherapy compared with, um, uh, with nothing, with wait and see. And um, you see there that the risk of the local recurrence is the half in the combined treatment arm, and this is clearly standard. The data you have seen decreases the risk to the half, and it's no standard. The point is, can we find the ideal patient for adjuvant and for early salvage treatment? The first question is, do margins matter? These are data from Stevenson and newer ones from Yosefovic. And when you are looking for this curve, you can see that the hazard ratio of relative risk is double for these who have positive margins. But when you look for harder endpoints due to this paper for prostate cancer-specific survival, then it's questionable. Do the extent of margins matter? Yes, the focal positive margin also has a clear decrease of PSA um, recurrence-free survival and much more the extensive positive surgical margins. So there is clear effect that the margins matter. When you're looking into the American trial, I will go very short over these, then they have shown an overall survival advantage after 10 years of about one and a half year, and the others, we didn't see it. The EITC trial, as shown by Markus, you have seen here the 10-year results, a clear advantage in biochemical progression-free survival, and nearly significant, um, but not significant, uh, for the clinical progression-free survival. No difference in overall survival, that's clear. The German trial, which is now coming up in European urology, and um, you have heard about this, just a point a step back, all PT3 tumors, important, the only study with a clear definition of PN0, a median of eight lymph nodes was taken out, not so much, but not so bad. The PSA was undetectable before start of adjuvant treatment, and it was a definition of below 0.05, and it's the only study with 3D treatment planning that's important later on. And we had a central pathological review 
who reviewed it later on. At first, the first review was done without, only with the local pathology, and then we published the data with the central pathology review. Ten years median follow-up. You have seen the curves. The primary endpoint, and I'm a little bit astonished, Marcus reviewed it. I think you didn't read and looked for the primary endpoint. It was biochemical progression-free survival and not overall survival. You see a clear decrease, highly significant, like the others. And when you look into the subgroup of positive margins, you see an impressive result. You have the recurrence rate. But distant metastasis-free survival and overall survival, no difference. Why? It was not the end point. The study is not powered for this question. So you can't use it to say you don't show any advantage in overall survival. What is very important in these patients? This is a famous paper coming from Lawrence Collett and then from Theo Thunderquist, a pathologist. The first publication of the EORTC trial, these were the patients, half of the patients, 500, were selected from Theo Thunderquist and the reference pathologist looked over these data. And at the first analysis, all forms of extracapsular extension, margin status, seminal vesicle infiltration, all did stand to profit from adjuvant radiotherapy. And Theo Quast um, was a little bit astonished. He saw that in nearby the half of the patients, the wrong tumor stage, the wrong cleason, and these were high volume centers in the European community. And when he looked carefully over this, he had only one point who was clearly significant, in favor of adjuvant radiotherapy, and the patients who stand to profit most are these with positive margins, 30%. We were the, had the only trial who had also a reference pathology, and we published it in European Urology last year. And what you can see here, this is from the local pathology, this is from the reference pathology, and it's quite interesting. Positive surgical margins from the local pathology, 175, later on 191, and also here 108 and 124 with negative margins. It went in both directions. And when they included into the analysis these data, then the trial became positive. And when you looked in the multivariate analysis, the surgical major margin status made it positive. If we didn't have the reference pathology, our trial would be negative. So, where are the central pathologic reviews for all the data you have shown for early or for salvage therapy? There is none. So, there is a difference we can't estimate. And very important, the highest impact in the ERTC trial was even for patients with PT2 tumors. 180 patients randomized in this trial, and the biggest effect was in these patients not only in PT3 tumors. A point who has not been discussed until yet, adjuvant radiotherapy for positive nodes after radical prostatectomy, a huge retrospective study, again coming from Briganti and between Milan and Rochester. 700 patients were investigated, and it's retrospective, clear, all had positive nodes, and it's a propensity-matched pair analysis, group one, were these who had adjuvant radiotherapy plus hormonal treatment, the others only hormonal treatment, median follow-up eight years. In retrospective, there is a 20% overall survival for, um, favor due to the patients treated with adjuvant radiotherapy for lymph node positive disease. And in a recent paper from the group of Abdullah, they again looked at the same patients with a longer follow-up, 8.4 years, and in overall survival, know that is metastasis-free survival, there is also a 5% overall survival in the patients treated with adjuvant radiotherapy. When you're looking for breast cancer, the effect after 15 years on overall survival is about 3 to 5%, not more, but it's highly significant. The most important point for my personal feeling is the comparison of side effects. I always hear there are the same side effects using adjuvant radiotherapy and early salvage radiotherapy. These are the data Marcus has shown from our 10-year results study, and you see grade 3, 1%, grade 2, 2% for the bladder, grade 2, 1% for the rectum. 60 gray is given very safe, also 64 gray, very safe with IMIT or 3D. It was the only study using the modern techniques, not the most modern techniques. And this is a nice paper, paper coming from the Memorial Sloan Cancer Center, as cited in other parts uh, earlier. It's a retrospective study with 300 patients using IMRT3D. It's post-operative salvage therapy. 
and they looked for side effects. They gave 72 gray in the median. And what you can see here for late GU toxicity, you see even using IMRT, 15% of grade 2 plus side effects. And you see the effect of IMRT, only 3% had erectile late GI toxicity, 15% GU, 3% GI. And here we have patients, they looked for incontinence after salvage radiotherapy. Six of the 17 patients who developed grade 3 urinary incontinence following the management of urethral structure. So there are significant parts of side effects using high-dose modern technique, salvage radiotherapy. These are not published data with a long follow-up seven years from the Charité series, from myself series, 66 gray, and we had also 5.5% grade 3 side effects, 1% in the study of adjuvant radiotherapy. Marcus has shown this. These studies are all under the way, comparing adjuvant and salvage treatment. These are the new recommendations of the American Society of Urology, um, of the AOA and the ASTRO, and this is coming from this paper. And the clear point in this guideline statement was, in the patient's PT3 and so on, it's standard, evident, evidence strength grade A. And we said the same in the updated part of the, Euro, uh, of the, of the European guidelines, and also we said, we said treat the right patient, PT3, Gleason 7 to 10, PT3, and treat them adjuvantly with a low rate of side effects and start with early salvage even in patients below 0.2. And so you have two clearly different groups. The first stand to profit from a low rate of side effects and we have a high grade of evidence. And for the second one, we have a very low grade of evidence. You can see it here. For the first one, A, 1B, and here it is 3. So altogether, my conclusion is adjuvant radiotherapy is absolutely no overtreatment for the high-risk patients. And these are patients with high Gleason grades, positive surgical margins, the combination of this, and also the lengths with, length, with long positive surgical margins. And for these patients, including the trial from Briganti and myself, these studies are not powered to compare these with early salvage radiotherapy. We have a level of evidence 1A. The side effects clearly favor adjuvant radiotherapy. So for my personal feeling, it's a clear recommendation, and I do hope you can believe me. Thanks a lot. Um, thank you very much for this really excellent talk uh, and pro et contra. Is there any uh, question? Yes, please, Peter. I sense there's little difference between your two positions. So my question for both of you is, is there a role for ultra-sensitive PSA, in your case, Marcos, to find those patients even a few months earlier that have a rising PSA? And for you, Thomas, to uh, comment on, clearly you're isolating the high-grade positive margin, but would a rising ultra-sensitive PSA incorporate more people into your uh, protocol. So my question is, any role for, for, for the ultra-sensitive PSA assay yeah, identifying yeah. key patients early? Yeah, I think so. And uh, uh, we, are, we, we are actually, the two groups are, are just comparing a study on that. And we have just, we have already um, sent it in for the German meeting that we're looking at very early PSA uh, recurrence. And uh, we could show in our, in our uh, database in Hamburg that once a patient, for example, reaches 0.1, it's just a question of time until he gets above 0 0.2. And we could see that in 96% of those patients who reach 0 0.1 that they eventually uh, get above the... Uh, so I think there is a role for, for very low PSA. And as well, uh, that's, uh, that data will come from Thomas, we will show that these patients who are uh, irradiated at a very early PSA recurrence point in time with very low numbers have better outcome than those who... Uh, it's, it's like a continuous risk of, um, of uh, response to, to radiation therapy. From my point of view, the most important point is that even in the patients with the PSA below 0.03, and they have these risk factors I have shown, they have a very high risk to develop later on a recurrence, and we can effectively treat these patients with a low, lower dose, a significant lower dose with a significant rate of 
side effects lower. And so I think there's clearly a point for this PSA for a, start, for a very early start for adjuvant treatment. Laurie yes, Klotz, um, we'll come back to you, Peter. Um, I, one, those were two great and very balanced talks. My question for Marcus is, would, do you think it's true that if you have a patient who you are certain is going to have progression, that in a sense the earlier they get the radiation therapy, the better? Do we have consensus on that? If, if you know someone is going to progress, should, is it true that the earlier the better? And my question for Thomas is, I didn't hear much about stratifying patients for risk of recurrence beyond PT stage, positive margin, and grade. But for example, there's some German data I've seen that extent of positive margin, number of positive margins is predictive. And you can identify a group who fulfill your criteria but still have a low risk. So, so then shouldn't we be trying to really stratify and say, in the guy who we can be almost certain is going to progress based on his pathologic features, we should treat him adjuvantly and then offer salvage to the ones with a lower risk? So um, that's exactly what we are doing when we have these this, uh, weekly meetings. We don't only look at, at, PT, at PT stage and Gleason, but as well as length and, and the Gleason grade at the margin. And I completely 100% agree with you that the lower the PSA, the more effective it is. And if you are certain that somebody will recur, as we are doing on a daily basis, we even uh, recommend adjuvant radiation therapy, certainly. And we sometimes have to... And, and we have discussed it back and forth. I'm, I'm very happy that you've just shown that you can now officially uh, are you allowed to, to uh, indicate um, salvage radiation therapy even at a PSA of 0 0.1 because we, in our center we sometimes fight with our radiation oncologist because he really insists on the German guidelines. They say if it is two times above 0 0.2, that's the definition of PSA recurrence. And we sometimes have the discussion even with our radiation oncologist to convince him to start uh, salvage earlier. It's correct. Um, I didn't show the data. The length of positive surgical margins and the number has clearly impact on the um, recurrence. Um, it's, sh it's also shown in the European Urology paper and for example in our tumor board for a patient with a PT3 R0 patient, Gleason 6 or also 7, I would not recommend adjuvant radiotherapy due to these data. I would wait. But for a patient with two positive margins, PT3A, in a length of about two to three millimeters, then we recommend adjuvant radiotherapy. But we wait, that's very important, and until we see the nadir, that's very important, because when you start too early, it's possible that these patients would never have an undetectable PSA. You can start at a moment with adjuvant radiotherapy when the PSA is detectable, and this is clearly an undertreatment because that's salvage radiotherapy. That's very dangerous. You have to wait until you have the nadir. That's the most important, the most important point I personally see. So, three months later, you know it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Two there. Back to Peter. And then. So, was one of your final conclusive remarks was that. Uh, adjuvant radiotherapy is not over treatment. I think this cannot remain uncontradicted because Marcus showed uh, with your own data that 35% of the patients you treat would not develop a recurrence without adjuvant treatment and another say 55 patients will develop the recurrence anyway. So there are 20% of the patients who benefit and 80% do not benefit, so the over-treatment rate is 80%. Yeah? And the question simply is, do, does, do these 80% over-treatment rate, uh, are they justified by the reduction of side effects because you are allowed to give a little bit less radiotherapy as compared to early salvage radiotherapy, but you cannot contradict that there is over-treatment in adjuvant radiotherapy in patients who has a, have a PSA of zero after radiotherapy, after operation. I agree, Michael. It was not precise enough. It's a very low overtreatment rate in the right patient. And you can say also radical prostatectomy as primary definitive radiotherapy is an overtreatment in a lot of patients. You have always in medicine, you have overtreatment. For these rectal cancer patients where this treatment 
as I said, is standard, proven standard worldwide. You have an overtreatment rate of about 60% for combined chemoradiotherapy to give a benefit to about 15%. It's well accepted. Yeah. Yeah. May I comment on that? Yeah, so course. you're telling us there's so much overtreatment, so we, we accept it as well. No, 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 and, no. And the I, other no, no. I want to say that overtreatment is a point which is well accepted in other parts. I will not accept it. So I said treat the right patient where the overtreatment rate is only about 10 to 20 percent. And that's very low when they profit such a much. And such I, I, I but again, this is. comment one, one thing? Or you start? It's semantic. How can you define 80 percent as very low? This, is, this contradicts my common horse sense. What do, why do you think? Okay, 80%? Well, we're not going to win on that. No, 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 no. So just, just, just a moment. Why 80 yeah. percent? Why 80 percent? The 80 percent. Where do you come? 20 percent benefit, and another 80 percent do not that's, benefit that's. because they develop recurrence anyway, or they are cured anyway. Anyway, let's agree to move on. So we can't agree on what's a lot. <laughs> I, and what's I just want to make one one little comment. Go on, because there, there are many questions. Is, yeah. So what we heard from you that that adjuvant radiation therapy has lower side effects than early salvage. Agree. When you use 72 gray, you agree. Okay. When you use so you say gray. it's for an advantage to give 100% of men a low side effect profile than 40 or 60 or percent of men a higher uh, 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 mobility profile. So I think if you put it all together, there's no advantage because you have so many patients with low side effects. Yes, but I didn't say 100% okay. low. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, well, who's got the microphone? We I can't see. <laughs> Okay. Anyway. okay. Um, Hans Lilja, uh, congratulations to both of you. Excellent. But you're also debating on an aspect here about the tumor marker and its uh, ap uh, application in this setting, where I think there should be less controversy uh, because there are technical solutions to move forward. But I don't think there has been enough explanation or uh, um, uh, urge from the community to use that, uh, those kind of technical advances that could be in place. Uh, we have the biochemical setting of that we know that we can declare uh, um, an individual BCR free after a surgery within about six half-lives of the free forms, which would make a week. So that could be one way. And we could do that with uh, very low detection limits. We know that there are FDA cl um, cleared assays that detect down to a few picograms per ml. Mm -hmm. uh, they were brought off the market, unfortunately, after we actually had shown that a, a continuous rise with two picograms per ml a month uh, during, in this t case, a six to uh, 18 month period, or six, six months to three years, I can't remember exactly, uh, with three measures in, in between there, uh, you could have a 97% um, uh, accuracy of declaring individuals who would have no uh, metastasis eight years or longer out, uh, which we were in the setting actually to try to uh, independently replicate. So if we bring these kind of arguments together, we could have much more accurate and sensitive tools that are specific to detect an early recurrence safely and see that that is linked to a, a rise in the PSA. But it's not possible to do it on the type of typical laboratory instruments that are brought in in the large uh, automation setting. We need a subset where we focus on that setting. And then you can move forward and probably bring the time difference between an ART and in, an ESRT down to almost a minimum. So that's a statement. We'll, we'll, let, we'll let that hang. Neither of you commented on the biology, and I just wonder whether you both would. So. Um, the pro-inflammatory state after surgery is, is not a good place for tumor cells. Uh, the proliferation rates are much increased due to the inflammatory markers. There's good animal evidence to show that trauma increases proliferation. Um, there is good evidence now, I think, in breast cancer that that's the case. If adjuvant works, it's because it, it stops that process. Um, and, and, and that process would lead 
to metastases or a change in the phenotype of the cancer. Um, I wonder if you could both comment on that. So in terms of, in biological terms, adjuvants would um, impede um, or mitigate that process, whereas delayed treatment obviously wouldn't. It would allow that um, process to occur, whether that should drive our decision making or not. I mean, that's a, a nice theory behind it, but the, the clinical data do not, to me, suggest that, that really this is an, an effect we have to think about when we uh, indicate adjuvant or early salvage. I think we should, uh, as I said, look at the, at the PSA and, and see what's, what, what's, which patient needs to the treatment. But it must be the mechanism of action, yeah? So mm. treating early must that's, stop. That's like, I think either that's a, must sterilize tumor cells or affect the inflammatory response to surgery. I mean, there's breast cancer. Yes, is from full the of theoretical yeah. point of view, that's the correct point. But I think we have no data for prostate cancer. We have some data for breast cancer, that's correct. But for prostate cancer, we don't have it. So it's, it's difficult to do so. OK. Did you have one last point? And this will be the last one. Yeah. There's clearly, this is for Thomas, there's clearly consensus on radiation in patients who have recurrence. The question is, is there uh, standardization on what fields you pick and what doses you give for the various grades of, 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 of Gleason, score, uh, Gleason score on the patients who have recurrence? <clears throat> not really, not really, because we have a problem with the correct dose for salvage radiotherapy, that's the point. We see that we have to increase it from 66, so we all write at least but not to Gleason or so. We, we normalize ice in three years, give 72 gray, but the evidence is not so high. And for adjuvant radiotherapy also, we saw local recurrences in the rate of about 5%. And so we hired also the dose there up to 64 to 66 gray. Um, it's difficult to answer because there is a, there is a relative wide range. Yes, but normally the urologist has a, the urologist have a partner, his radiation oncologist, and uh, so he can discuss this with him. Okay, S thank you very much uh, for this excellent uh, 